El Mariachi, the practice film that made an icon, is the topic of today's episode of the J.R. Perez podcast. Welcome back to the show. My name is J.R. Perez, and I am the brains and muscle behind this operation. On this occasion, we will be taking a trip to the early 90s and exploring a very significant film, a game changer, really, in how it was made. On this episode, we will once again enjoy a nice piece of music I ran across, as well as a reading of A Price on His Head, a short tale by Russell M. Krauss. I decided to dedicate this third episode of the podcast to El Mariachi because not only is it a very important film to me as a story lover and creator, it is also a very important film for up and coming filmmakers. You see, this movie is one of the first to make the production of a film accessible to all. And if you combine the lessons it teaches with the digital filmmaking norms of today, you could theoretically make films at no cost. And although no budget films are nothing new, and there have been plenty of techniques that have arisen directly from the digital filmmaking revolution, knowing early efforts and analog techniques can only enrich and enlighten. So here we go. El Mariachi is a low budget independent film from the early 90s, which helped usher in the independent movie boom of its time, and in the process made an icon out of itself and its maker. At over 30 years old, the film is still considered to be an important part of a filmmaker's formation, as is the case with many of the other frugally produced films it inspired, and along with its making of companion book, Rebel Without a Crew, it should be considered required studying for anyone looking to enter the industry. Its creator, renowned filmmaker Robert Rodriguez, conceived it as a practice film to be sold on the Latino video market in order to fund bigger projects. Since then, he has become a 30-year veteran with hundreds of credits as writer, director, producer, executive producer, composer, cinematographer, editor, and creator combined, both in television and film. His television work, it should be noted, has been mainly with El Rey Network which he founded, though he has been involved with The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett for Disney+. In film, he's been involved in series and franchises such as his own Mexico Trilogy, From Dusk Till Dawn, Spy Kids, Sin City, Predators, Machete, Alita Battle Angel, the film Red Eleven, which is inspired by his experiences as described in Rebel Without a Crew, the superhero film We Can Be Heroes, the Billie Eilish concert film Happier Than Ever, A Love Letter to Los Angeles, the upcoming science fiction thriller Hypnotic, among others. And combined, his directorial efforts have grossed more than one and a half billion dollars worldwide. But the one that started it all is a $7,000 shot in the dark that paid off, even if the payoff arrived in ways not originally planned. Upon failing to gain traction in the Latino straight-to-video market, which was originally his target market, Rodriguez put bigger distribution companies in his sights, where ultimately it attracted attention. And so much attention was garnered that Columbia Pictures bought it and released it in theaters where it went to gross more than $2 million. It received universal critical acclaim, won multiple awards including the Independent Spirit Award for Best First Feature in 1993, and was eventually included among the American Film Institute's 2001 list of 400 movies nominated for the top 100 most heart-pounding American movies. It was also deemed culturally, historically or aesthetically significant by the United States Library of Congress and was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry. Altogether, the efforts made and the results produced helped Robert Rodriguez secure Hollywood backing for such films as The Faculty and Sin City. All the attention on El Mariachi, however, was commanded by both the film and the process of its creation. It was made by a team of two, Carlos Gallardo, who contributed in front of the camera, and Robert, who did all the behind-the-scenes work. To Rodriguez, being a one-man filmmaking entity is empowering, because by doing everything himself, he could avert major obstacles the likes of which can halt an entire production. If there is no one to help and no money to spend, 
he could still make his film and in the process showcase his wide range of talents and skills. In El Mariachi, he was producer, director, writer, and among other things, the special effects man. These skills not only created a film that is a school all on its own, but made Rodriguez a very attractive prospect for the business, who can make good films at a low cost. As Rodriguez himself has expressed, the key to solving problems lies in creativity, not money. And his very creative ideas contributed, if not downright created, the tools which not only allowed him to make his film, but have allowed many other filmmakers to take it upon themselves to produce their own work. In order to reduce costs, Rodriguez used local resources that were within reach. The opening sequence was filmed at the local Acuna jail situated on the outskirts of the town, and in order to avoid hiring actors and renting clothing, he included the participation of the real-life warden and guard of the jail. The guns in the shootout that the scene showcases were borrowed from local police as well. They, however, could only fire one blank shot before jamming, which I believe is the case with all firearms. This was fixed in editing by double cutting each gun firing and upon cutting to the bad guys they were shown reacting to the shots and machine gun sound effects as they were squibbed. The squibs themselves were no more than condoms filled with fake blood and fixed over weightlifting belts. The fast action shots were filmed from the back of a strategically used pickup truck whose gas was saved by shooting many of the exterior scenes on the same two blocks. In the first chase scene, when the mariachi supposedly runs away from the hotel in which he's staying, said hotel can be seen just over his shoulder soon afterward. For the moving camera shots, Rodriguez sat in a broken hospital wheelchair to be pushed around and a certain narrative oversight was creatively compensated for in post-production. The mariachi's line, free coconuts, had to be added because at no time was he shown paying for the coconut he enjoyed as he went into town at the beginning of the film. Further savings were achieved by opting for 16mm film instead of 35mm, as well as filming the scene sequentially and in single takes. Immediately after acting for the camera, the actors performed for a microphone into which they would repeat their lines and actions in order to record the dialogue and sound. And this was done with ordinary audio recording equipment. For the most part, they were able to recite their dialogue with the same words and pacing that would allow the two elements to appear to be in sync. And the actual synchronization of the two was facilitated by the sequence with the Pitbull Terrier, which was shot for that particular purpose. Other creative techniques allowed him to dynamize the sequences and correct mistakes without requiring more film or additional filming time. In order to make each sequence appear as though it had been shot with multiple cameras simultaneously, Rodriguez froze the action every few seconds so he could change the camera angle. This change was also used to circumvent the mistakes the actors would make in the middle of a scene as he would change the camera angle and pick up the take right before the mistake was made, rather than reshooting from the beginning. Ultimately, this technique allowed him to complete the film on time and under budget as only 24 rolls of film were used and $7,225 were spent out of the $9,000 originally projected. To keep expenses right where they were, Rodriguez avoided all the costs of cutting on film by transferring the footage to video for editing. The feat, which is by no means small, was documented in Rebel Without a Crew or how a 23-year-old filmmaker with $7,000 became a Hollywood player, a first-person account of the entire process. Presented in a diary format, the book is a detailed exposition, quote, from the idea of El Mariachi to the raising of the money and writing of the script, which in my case went hand in hand, to the shooting of the film, the video editing, the trip to Los Angeles to find a distributor, also how I got an agent at one of the biggest talent agencies in the world while I was in Los Angeles, and what you can expect to happen after you get a big agent like that, then what happened when I got calls from the studios to pitch my ideas for future projects, to the sale of El Mariachi to Columbia Pictures, the re-editing of the movie to produce a final film print and 35mm blow-up, the festival circuit including Telluride, Toronto and Sundance, up to the theatrical release of my home movie by a major Hollywood studio." End quote. In tandem, the book and the film, especially with the director's commentary, 
constitute a powerful source of ideas and inspiration for any aspiring filmmaker. In its collective value and message, which are continually amplified by its creator, have made Robert Rodriguez an icon of modern independent filmmaking. This was actually an article I wrote not too long ago as I tried to get work with the entertainment content and news website Screen Rant. It ultimately went nowhere, and now I have this and six other expositions to share with you. They're interesting pieces, I think, that will now see the light of day on this podcast. Be sure to let me know what you think. And as always, I will include links to the movie and the book for your convenience. I'd like to mention that sometimes some links are affiliate links and any purchase you make via these links will allow me to make a commission from those sales and set commissions I will use to improve and expand this podcast. But it won't be all affiliate links. Anytime I find a link that can help you enjoy whatever work I've presented, I will include it, affiliate program or not. Because the true benefit for this podcast lies in its listeners more than in sales commissions. But enough about that. Let's listen to some music. This time I've run across another instrumental tune, which according to my friend Shazam is called Casual D and it is by Mean Machine Dean. I found it on the YouTube audio library and it goes a little something like this.
What do you think? I myself found it very relaxing. There's a sadness to it, very fitting for a story of some kind. It's like you can use it to get in the mood for writing a particular dark story. I will give it a try at some point. For now, you can reach it via the link I've set up for you. And now it's story time. Again, don't worry, this one too is short and sweet. It's called A Price on His Head by Russell M. Krauss, and it is a story about an embarrassing misunderstanding. It appeared in People's Story magazine on November 25th, 1922, and it is read by Dale Grothman. A Price on His Head by Russell M. Krauss Night, big black blanket that it is, had fallen upon the big woods and tucked its furry, finny, feathery populace to sleep. It was so dark that a barrel of pitch would have loomed up like a bonfire. Only the sentinel of the law, Pat the police dog, remained awake, and his eyelids were drooping like the grand final rose of summer. If only something would happen, he mused, as he ambled aimlessly over the same old monotonous beat. Then, suddenly and unmistakably, there came a sound. Pat's ears flapped back against his head with a thump that jarred him into full wakefulness. It was a voice. He listened intently. Once before he thought he'd heard a shh only to discover, to his official embarrassment, that it was just a couple of trees whispering. But this time it was the real thing. He ducked behind an ash can and listened. "'There's a price on your head, I tell you,' he heard in a muffled tone. "'Tonight's your last chance to escape. Get out of here. Go to the hills, anywhere.' and wait until this thing blows over. They'll get you sure tomorrow. Go! Pat recognized the voice as that of Gay Dog, a well-known canine around town. A likable ne'er-do-well Gay Dog, but none too careful about his companions. Pat had long suspected that some day evil associates would be his undoing. But there was no time now to think of Gay Dog. There was a fugitive from justice, a criminal with a price on his head. Pat was still thinking about the rhinestone collar he'd buy with the reward when he heard a crackling of bushes and turned to see two forms. Gun in claw, he dived into the underbrush on the trail of the desperado. It was dark but soon he had his quarry, a strange, rough-necked, red-headed fellow. By the time the common fleas court had convened next morning, the officer had rounded up his material witness as well. Judge Sober Owl listened to Pat's story, then called Gay Dog to the stand. This is a terrible outrage! barked the material witness with a snort. Terry Turkey is a bird of high ideals. But, broke in Pat petulantly, I heard this witness say this prisoner had a price on his head. He must be some dangerous. Dangerous nothing, came back Gay Dog. Of course he's got a price on his head. Seventy-two cents a pound. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. That's more than you'd bring on the 4th of July with a hot dog famine at Cody Island. The End of A Price on His Head by Russell M. Krauss How was it? I myself loved the twists at the end. Russell M. Krauss was an American playwright best known for his partnership with Howard Lindsay, another playwright, with whom he famously collaborated on a succession of Broadway plays and musicals for 27 years during the mid-20th century. This marks the end of the third episode of the J.R. Perez podcast. What do you think of this format? 
I'm thinking of keeping the topic song story format for the time being as I continue structuring and organizing the show's production. In the future, I will expand it with a number of ideas I have in store. I will now proceed with the customary call to action. If you like what you heard and would like to come along for the journey, be sure to follow us or me. You will find all the pertinent links related to today's content in the description area or comment section in whichever platform you happen to be listening. If you know of others who would also enjoy the podcast, please share it with them or otherwise inform them about it. I would be most appreciative. That is all for today. This is J.R. Perez, signing out.